Hey, welcome back to the pod. It's so good that you're here. I really do appreciate the fact that you make the time to listen because you're making the time to think and grow. And I appreciate having some time to be with you to share my thoughts. And I know a lot of us who are here are business owners or working in businesses. And I've been in business now, my gosh, for over 30 years. I'm trying to do the math in my head. It's a long time. It's exciting. It's 32 years. It's exciting and gratifying to be in business, to own a business. We're all in business on some level, right? And I think when you are a business leader, it can be exciting and fulfilling and downright scary. So I, I want to talk a little bit about that, but really what I want to focus on today is what it's like to be a woman in business and how a woman is working on such a high level, but also looking to balance work, family, and a lot of other obligations. And at the same time, probably really nurturing a lot of relationships taking care of family members, maybe even aging parents, children, grandchildren, working within the community, taking time to volunteer and just juggle a lot of stuff, right? Juggle a lot of responsibilities. And we are all living a really big dynamic life. So what I really want to talk about today, honestly, is how we can support each other doing all that. Magic can happen when women make a decision to support other women. And when women can be in a position to guide and mentor other women, I think that we have this obligation to do that more so that we can create this safe space for all of us to grow and for all of us to nurture the journey that we're on and really show each other how together we can do great things. So if you're with me on this, if you're like listening to this thing, yeah, I, I'm with you, Anna. Here's the deal. If we as women truly want to guide each other and truly want to guide younger women, then we have to start by seeing each other. We have to listen to each other, acknowledge each other, and support each other. And we have to acknowledge that together we are stronger than when we are divided. And that as women, we can do amazing things. So if you are a woman right now in business, I acknowledge you, I see you, I get it because contributing to or running a business as well as leading teams of people it can sometimes feel like really risky business and it comes with a lot of challenges and it can come with a lot of unforeseen circumstances. And there are decisions to be made every day. And we know that our decisions as leaders can impact so many other people from our team members to our clients and customers to the community around us. And I believe the purpose of a business is for it to grow and be prosperous. And we want it to also provide value. We want it to provide value internally and externally. And a lot of us also want to stand for something in the community. So we want to really put our mission, vision, and values out there publicly. So being a part of all of this is not for the faint of heart. It is an amazing journey, but it does come with a lot of obligation, a lot of responsibility and a lot of challenges. And if we didn't have enough pressure trying to solve financial problems, people problems, get into strategy session, we're also, as women, responsible for raising babies or maybe some puppies too along the way and creating really great, obedient people and beings. And if anyone's wondering if there's a difference being a woman in business, I'm here to tell you that there is. <laughs> there definitely is. And I wanted to dedicate this episode to all my fellow women who are leading big lives, who are teaching, who are mentoring, who are leading, who are running businesses, not-for-profits, community leaders, political leaders, medical and healthcare professionals, and everything in between. For the women who are choosing that their uh, priority is to 
run their family and their household and raise their children, that does not come easy. And I applaud you for that too. And I'm here to tell you that there is a difference being a woman today. And I think there always has been. And if you really think about it, um, we can go through history and see amazing examples of women who have had the courage to stand up for what they believe in, who had the maybe opportunity, maybe fight of a lifetime to open doors and break through glass ceilings so that we could all have opportunity today. And as strong as we fought along the years, we're still fighting in some places, certainly to have equality and equity as women. But I will say it's just exciting to know that we stand on the shoulders of so many amazing women who have come before us. And all of the challenges, all of the struggles, all of the obstacles that have been put in front of us as women has never stopped us, nor will it. And I think that we all show up every day wanting to give parts of ourselves to what we're doing. We want to lead. We want to make a difference. We want to create opportunities for ourselves and other people. We want to break through barriers. But it's not easy. It's not easy every day to do that. The challenges are real, and we face a few of them. And Lord knows a lot of us, we try to be Wonder Woman, maybe subconsciously, inadvertently, but we, we think that we have to be superhuman in all of the juggling. And we convince ourselves and others that what we do isn't so extraordinary. And yet it is. So right now I'm going to tell you, I, I recognize you and I say you are extraordinary because we cannot be afraid to show others that it might be hard sometimes. We have to be willing to stop and acknowledge the challenges that we all face. And again, I'm dedicating this to the women in my life, to the women I see in the business world, in the community, and in every place in between. I acknowledge what it is that you are trying to accomplish every day. I acknowledge how well you're doing. And I acknowledge also your fear and anxiety and your struggle. And I, I acknowledge it because we can't fix what we don't acknowledge. If there is something to celebrate, let's celebrate it. And if there is something that we can do better, let's talk about it. I know our challenges are all different. And everyone listening to this right now is experiencing something different in their life. And I know that our challenges can come from outside circumstances, external pressure. And sometimes our challenges come from ourselves, come from an internal place. And sometimes those internal challenges, like our own fears, our mindset, our negative talk, right? Our self-talk is not pushing us forward or repairing us, can create these stories in our head, these stories that we create of inadequacy, of imposter syndrome, and I'm just going to say, I'm talking from experience. I've suffered and struggled with imposter syndrome and still do. And I'm sure I'm not alone. I can't be alone. I'm sure that there is someone listening who can say bravely that they have dealt with or maybe are dealing with imposter syndrome on some level. And if you're not familiar with the term, imposter syndrome is a feeling of, I don't belong here. Imposter syndrome is this sense that you don't deserve whatever success you're experiencing or that you've been given too much or this inner voice that says, I'm not smart enough or I'm not worthy or I'm not experienced enough to be able to do all the things that I'm doing. Or it's a fear. It's a fear that someone's going to find you out, that someone is going to figure out that you're not that smart right? It's that little voice that says, oh God, how long before they find out that I'm not qualified for this, that I'm just a fraud. Forbes magazine published an article recently that said 75% of all women executives across industries has experienced imposter, imposter syndrome in their careers. That's three out of four of us. Imposter syndrome may have shown up for you in high school when you tried 
out for that sport team or the school play or the band, student government. It may have reared its ugly head just the other day or maybe when you woke up this morning when your thoughts came flooding in about all the things that made you feel for some reason that you weren't worthy. Maybe it showed up in the conference room when you were delivering that presentation that you were probably nailing, by the way. But there's that little voice, that little drunk monkey, we call it, that sits on your shoulder that says, no, you're not smart enough. No, you couldn't possibly be doing this. No, you're not good enough to be the CEO. See, imposter syndrome is basically in this lie. It's a feeling that we are sitting in. It's thoughts that are swirling in our minds that are basically telling us that we're not good enough. And I'm just saying that it's not serving you. It is not helping you. It is not doing anything for you. It's a waste of your time and energy because you are good enough. We are good enough. We are smart. We are creative. We are inspiring. We can figure it out. We are leaders. Because we are women, I'm just saying we have these amazing innate natural abilities that make us really well designed for the challenges and the struggles and the opportunities and the advancement and the development that we can all create and inspire through our own actions. We are enough. Now, look, I don't know why we were created differently than men. And I just want to say, I hope the men that listen and follow this podcast know how much I appreciate you. And, and then if you're still listening to this, I really appreciate you because we want you to be able to hear these conversations too. We want to know that you can be a part of what we need for support. But today it's about the women in my world that are listening to this because I want to speak directly to you as one of your tribe. I don't know, again, why we were created differently, but I believe we, we are, and I believe that we are better equipped to handle and navigate crisis and challenge. We can lead with common sense and logic and then drop into our hearts with the snap of a finger when necessary. We can be tough and we can be compassionate all in the same sentence. And women just see the world differently. We think differently because we're wired differently. I know you think so too. We need to acknowledge that. We need to feel it. And once we believe it for ourselves, we need to encourage it in each other. We need more encouragement from each other rather than biting or backstabbing because we need other women to guide women. We need women encouraging women. I think one of the most important ways women can guide each other in business, for instance, actually in life, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to focus just on business. Honestly, I want to say that the way for a woman to guide another woman is through mentorship. If we could take the time to really support each other in that way, because what a mentor does is it, a mentor shows you the ropes. A mentor can help you succeed in whatever it is because they have been there. They're able to help you because they've walked the journey. They have the knowledge and the experience. They've also had the experience of failing forward. So not only can they teach you and support you, but they can possibly give you enough information so you avoid some pitfalls in, in your journey. And I think that having a mentor in your life can help you grow to the best version of yourself. And so imagine if more women could support each other. And I know this is happening in a lot of places. I'm not saying that we don't help each other, but imagine if we could take it to another level. Imagine if we could really get to know the personal and professional goals of the women in our lives. Think about it right now. Think about a few women that you spend enough time with, whether they're coworkers, friends, your sisters, your other committee members. Who are you seeing on a regular basis? Do you know what's important to them? Do you know what their personal goals or professional goals might be? 
Do you ask them what's the most challenging thing they're experiencing right now? Do you share your highs and lows with them? Imagine if we could really get into those conversations and create these mentorship type relationships, right? I've been fortunate to have some amazing mentors and coaches in my life. And they have taught me things. They have helped me grow. They've encouraged me. They've called me out too on some things I needed to be aware of. And it is an amazing relationship when you have someone who can really just lock arms with you and really wants to be your cheerleader and help you to succeed. And I think that when we find that space to support each other, amazing things really can happen. And maybe we would suffer a little less from the imposter syndrome. And again, I said to you that oh, so many of us have lived through it. I certainly have lived through it. I'll tell you, I have been with Keller Williams now for 12 years. I am the general manager of the Keller Williams Hudson Valley Group, and it's been an incredible journey. And I have a, a great mentor and partner and friend in Rosemary Pilati, and she hired me 12 years ago to lead one of the KW franchises that she owns. And I was thrilled to take that position. And I've had an incredible opportunity to grow as a businesswoman, as a leader. I've had the privilege to lead incredible people. I have created other leaders through that. I direct our recruiting and expansion initiatives for the organization. And I believe I've been instrumental in and continue to develop even more business opportunities for us. And when I started back in September of 2012, I could not have predicted any of the success that I have achieved and any of the growth that I have witnessed. And the truth is, though, I also was not the person I am today. Now, I was excited when I took that position. Uh, I did sense the magnitude of what I was saying yes to 12 years ago. I knew that there was a huge opportunity in front of me, but I also knew there would be some challenges. And I would be lying if I told you I wasn't a little scared. But I also think that when you feel that kind of fear, it can be healthy, right? Because you realize you're stepping into something big and great. And so that fear can be a catalyst for a lot of opportunity. Now, I felt really confident coming into that position. I had been in sales and business development since I was 18. I've recruited and developed sales teams. I have built organizations. I have had my own businesses. I've been a part of other people's businesses. And I was pretty confident that everything I had done personally and professionally had prepared me for the role. And I still believe that's true. But when I came into the role and it started to become clear to me very quickly that what I had learned and experienced up until that point, that what got me there was not going to be enough to get me to the breakthrough I needed to take the business to that level of success. It started to really play on me. It started to make me doubt myself. And at that time in the business, we had some challenges. I was coming in to lead a newer office and it had some challenges to get stable and for it to be solvent. And I had to figure it out. I had to figure out how to grow our revenue, grow our agent count, reduce expenses, increase our market share and develop the agents there. I was looking at what those systems need to be, how to implement the best models, I was figuring it out, making some mistakes. But at all along, I think the biggest challenge that I started to face was maintaining a positive mindset because I started to doubt that I could do it. I started to wonder if she made the right choice in hiring me. I started to wonder if I was enough for the role. What was happening? Imposter syndrome was setting in. I was struggling with my own thinking. I was struggling with a lack of confidence. I was struggling with the challenges that were in front of me and wondering if I really had what it took to make it all change. 
And when I spoke to Rosemary about it in a lot of our strategy meetings, like a great mentor, one of the first things she instilled in me was her belief in me. And she really made it clear that she felt that she had made the right choice that I had what it took. But at the same time, we also talked about what it would take to, to turn this business around. We had to move it forward. And we did. And I think that we were able to get really clear about what needed to happen. And we got more strategic. And I, I started to work with our team. And we definitely made things happen. But what really started to change was how I started to look at myself. And I just realized that I was wasting a lot of time and energy doubting myself rather than looking at what my strengths were, looking at possibly some things I needed to do differently or learn, and that's fair. But really, it was about being able to see myself as someone who was capable and also someone who was willing. I was willing, I was committed, and I just had to get super clear about what was in my toolbox. And look, I also got clear I couldn't do it alone. And, and again, I think that when you are on the path for accomplishing big goals, we have to be clear that we need people around us to help us. I had to get clear that my success would only be determined by the number of other people that I could help and lead in that mission. And that's what continues to be true today. And so when I look back at all the success I've achieved in 12 years, where it's come from and what it continues to be is being purposeful around the people, being purposeful about who I can support, who I can lead, who I can mentor first as a business leader so that I can also find success through their success. And that's re what it's really, I think, about when we come back to what does it take to be women who can support other women. It was Rosemary's mentorship, for instance, that support, that encouragement that helped me to stay on track and to fight the negative self-talk that I was really being a victim to. And I'm proud to say that now when I look at our organization and how much it's grown, we have three offices. We have over 475 agents across a very wide area of the Hudson Valley in New York. And I'm also proud to say that 90% of our leadership team are women. And it, it's not intentional, but it just seemed to really kind of develop into an opportunity to find talent. And oftentimes the best talent was found with a woman that has joined our team. And I think that when we can really look for ways to support each other and inspire each other and encourage each other, we can teach each other some invaluable lessons. And when we also get honest and real and a little vulnerable, and we're willing to share our doubts, our fears, our struggles, our failures with each other, we all gain strength from that. I think that it makes us better at what we need to do next. I think sometimes we look around and we see accomplished, confident women who have achieved so much, like we all have. But we look at where they are at that moment. Do we take them the time to really think about and examine what it might have taken for them to get there? Like, do we know the road they had to travel to become who we see today? Do we ask them about the road they had to travel to get to where they are today? Have you ever gone up to a successful businesswoman and asked them about the challenges, the mistakes, and the failures they've experienced? Do we teach each other that we can do that? Do we teach each other what we've learned each time we've made a mistake? Are we willing to show the tough days and not just the victories? When we allow learning to come from our failures, we can develop self-confidence. We can develop more of our strengths. We sharpen the tools we already have. We add more people to our world that can help us. And we can create more confidence 
not only in ourselves, but in the women around us when we allow all that to be seen. And I think that a confident woman is not a perfect woman by any means, but oh, it's a woman who has learned from all her experiences and is willing to put the knowledge to use and who is willing to, to show you with some transparency what's working and maybe even what's not working. I've learned a few things from watching who I would call confident women. And I want to share a couple of things that I believe are habits that all confident women share. And the first one might surprise you, but I think the first one is that they start the day for themselves and not for other people. In other words, they have a routine in the morning that is for them. And I have been doing this for years. I still today, but I started when I was young, a young mom. I've always worked. I would get up before everybody else, five o'clock in the morning, just so I could have my quiet time. And sometimes I'd still do it on the weekends, just selfishly so that I can have some quiet time to myself. Whether your quiet time is for reflection, meditation, prayer, exercise, journaling, whatever it is, maybe it's even a catch up on a show that you love. We won't tell. But if you can start your day for yourself and, and not jump right out of bed starting to serve everyone around you, I think that's huge and can build your confidence. The, the second thing that I believe is true of confident women is that they know and understand that no and O oh is a complete sentence. They respect their boundaries and they show people how to treat them. They don't push past their limits. They don't try to over explain anything when they have to say no. And I think the other thing that is true about confident women is they work on themselves every day. And it could be in the smallest ways, but they acknowledge that personal growth is important because it starts with us and it ends with us. If we don't take care of ourselves personally, if we don't take care of ourselves professionally, if we don't really focus on our own growth, then how could we possibly help someone else? So it's not being selfish. It's just understanding that our growth has to be intentional. And the last thing I will say that I think is true of all confident women is they follow their gut. They follow their intuition. And I have to tell you that I still, even today, I'll just be so transparent. Sometimes I know something deep in my fiber especially when it comes, let's say, in the boardroom or professionally. And there's always that moment where I doubt myself and try to hold back and I push through and I use my voice and I share my thoughts or, or my opinion. And I, even if I'm wrong, though, I'm glad that I'm confident enough to say it. But so many times there's that little voice that says, oh, no, don't question. No, you might not be right. Maybe you don't know as much as everyone else does. But your intuition is really there to guide you. And when you follow your gut, usually you're right. And so be confident enough to do that and then to use your voice. Listen, there's amazing talent listening to this right now. I know there is. I can feel it actually coming through. And if we could all just take a moment and acknowledge our greatness, acknowledge our talents, imagine the changes we could create around us. There's a tribe and a community waiting for you. And maybe you're going to start it. Maybe you, there is one that you can step into. But if we're going to really help each other, if we're going to guide each other, if we're going to support each other, we have to be a community. And we have to realize that this tribe, right, this network of women who can support other women has to be honest and has to communicate with each other. Because God knows there's a lot of stuff that we see all day long, right, through social media and other images, but we're only seeing snippets of people's lives. We don't even know if half the stuff we're seeing is even really true. So we just have to take the time to make connections and get to know each other and be an advocate for each other. Because I believe supporting women means that we also have to come to terms. Yeah, here comes a little tough love. I think supporting women also means we have to come to terms with our own biases about it. 
I think we have to really face our belief system about what is acceptable behavior for women and what we determine to be positive or negative. And you know what I mean. Like sometimes we see a confident, outspoken woman in a meeting or on some big stage and we start judging them. And we start asking ourselves things like, who does she think she is? Why does she think she can do that? And the question might be actually the right one, but could you change the energy behind it? Could you ask, who does she think she is? What can I learn from her? How did she get there? What journey has she been on? See, if we could approach that with curiosity, we could open up communication. We could share so many wonderful things with each other and imagine the legacy we would start leaving for the younger generation of women. I don't want this to become anything political, believe me, but I hear some things right now that are just so sad and disturbing to me, questioning a woman's ability to lead an organization or a country solely based on their gender. It's just sad because I believe we're better than that. Now, I think we should be evaluating someone's capacity and capability on something far more deep than just their gender. I think that we can do better for the younger generation of professionals and leaders that are coming up and into the workforce, into in the communities, and into our government. I think that we could do better for them. And if we could show them more enthusiasm and a willingness to get involved and grow as leaders ourselves and support each other, I think the world could start to change just a little bit. For those of us who have been doing this for a little while, I'll say this. I'm inspired by the younger professionals that I'm seeing today. I think there's room for us to teach and mentor them in so many ways, mostly by example. But I also think that they have a lot that they can show and teach us if we're willing to have the conversation, if we're willing to move our judgments aside or bias aside, move our negative or limited thinking aside, and understand that we're stronger together. Because when one of us is successful, we all can become more successful. When one of us grows, we all grow. When one of us rises, we bring or should bring others with us. There's opportunity for everyone if we just stop getting in each other's way. Remember, success is not always achieved alone. Success is usually achieved through helping other people and letting other people help you. We need other people. We need other women to help us, guide us, and encourage us. Proximity is power, right? We become who we surround ourselves with. It's not about me, it's about we. We win when we all play together. When women support each other, incredible things happen. I'm going to end on this with you today. There's this term that I came across when I was doing some research. I hope I'm saying it correctly. It's Ubuntu. Ubuntu. It's an African word, and its meaning is the philosophy of humanity. Ubuntu simply means... I am because you are. I am successful because of who we are to each other. So Ubuntu is not just a word, it's a way of life. It's the essence of being human, honestly. Because life is about learning from each other, isn't it? I am who I am because of the people that come and go in my life and because of the people who have come before me. We need each other. And I cannot be all I can be unless you are all you can be. So Ubuntu is this belief that I can never be threatened by your success because when you succeed, we all succeed. The better you are, the better we all are. We are stronger together. I wish we could be Ubuntu in action. I believe you can be the best version of yourself 
by helping another woman become the best version of herself. If you take anything from this today, it's this. Don't go it alone. Encourage each other. Be honest with each other. Support each other. Make room for each other. Inspire great things in each other. We have the power to change each other's lives and the lives of countless others through our beliefs, our thoughts, and our actions. I'm Anna Gibbs. I'm a woman who sees you, supports you, encourages you, and wants the best for you. Because together, I think we can do more than apart. Thank you for listening to me today. I feel that our paths crossed today for a reason. And if there was anything that I said in this episode that inspired you, that encouraged you, share it with someone else, especially another woman that you know. Pass it on. And before you leave me, make sure you subscribe and follow this podcast. And I appreciate giving it a rating too. Thank you for being here. I'll see you next week.